Whoa, did I just make a follow-up to my most popular video? Uh, can't do that. Who the fuck do I think I am? Some kind of fucking content creator? Today, I want to talk about more banned strategies in competitive Pokemon, specifically Smogon singles, and funnily enough, most of these bans actually only came into place after my previous video. So there's a lot of recent stuff in here, which should hopefully be interesting. However, before I get into any specific bans, I kind of want to talk about bans as a whole, more so how certain people feel about them. Now listen, you are allowed to feel however you want to feel about specific bans. You're completely entitled to your own opinion. That's, that's fine. However, when sharing that opinion, I can assure you there is nothing more attractive than knowing what the fuck you're talking about. Like, if you're an experienced player and you're offering some insight into these bands, that's, that's really cool. And if you're an inexperienced player who's just genuinely asking why certain counterplay doesn't work, that's also cool. But when you're very clearly trying to chat shit about a ban for something that you never played against, in a tier that you've also probably never played, you just kind of look like a fucking goober. First off, I think a lot of people are still under the impression that these bans are just dictated by like a small group of Smogon boogeymen. No, 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 they're, they're, they're not, I can assure you. Typically, bans are decided through suspect tests where there's a ton of different people involved. All of them have to have significant experience and like, they each get their own say. It comes down to a vote. So like, technically speaking, if there's a ban you had a problem with, you could have stopped it. You could have done something. Huh? You you could have been the bomb ass player that showed the world why Baton Pass was okay actually. You know? You could you could have been the one who proved it wasn't that good, who found the miracle strategy that beats it every time. Where were you when the world needed you? You're like the fucking avatar except instead of saving the world, you just you, you kind of like Baton Pass. Like, look, I hate to say it, but sometimes you just got to accept that, you know, maybe the people actually playing the team might know a little bit better than you. Like, I swear to God, I got so many comments on the last video saying something like, Oh, uh, Baton Pass is fine in Gen 3, actually, because you can just run Haze. And it's like, okay, let, let's, let's run through the problems with that real quick, okay? So, how many overused Pokemon learn Haze in Gen 3? One, it's just Gengar. So what, uh, you, you, are you suggesting that every team runs Gengar? Or goes fucking dumpster diving in the lower tiers for Haze users? And even then, you're like assuming that Haze Gengar automatically beats Baton Pass teams? It, it really does not. Like, have you considered that Baton Pass teams pass the speed boost first? Like, that's, that's what they start with. So like, the opponent's probably gonna outspeed you, and like, it's hard enough for you to get in as is, because you're Gengar, you're pretty frail, like you're probably gonna have to come in after something else dies. And like, the opponent's faster than you, they can probably just taunt you before you use Haze. So like, now what? That was your one shot. So look, I'm not trying to say that you have to be an experienced player to be allowed an opinion. And for the record, most people aren't like this. They're genuinely really nice about it, and they just ask questions. But what I am trying to say is that if I see the words evasion and aerial ace ever used in a sentence again, I'm going to wake up in the fucking hospital. Getting into the actual band strategies, we're gonna start off with my favorite generation, but unfortunately not my favorite tier. This is a very recent band that only went through in June of this year, and it's for the combination of agility and a partial trapping move in generation one underused, also known as APT for agility and partial trapping. Now on their own, these moves are completely fine. Agility is just your average boosting move, and it's nice for boosting your speed and also for its utility with and versus paralysis. If you use agility while paralyzed, you ignore the speed drop from paralysis, and if you use it while the opponent is paralyzed, it reapplies their speed drop. So there's a bit of utility there, it's pretty neat. In case you're wondering, this is how Slowbro often outspeeds its opponent in Gen 1 Overused when it and the opponent are both paralyzed, despite how slow Slowbro is. By boosting its stats with Amnesia, it's reapplying the opponent's speed drop from Paralysis, and therefore outspeeding it. 
Now, partial trapping moves like Fire Spin, Clamp, and especially Wrap are very notorious in Generation 1, but they're not really a problem on their own. In fact, even in Gen 1 Underused, a tier where the undisputed best Pokemon is an amazing Wrap user, people tend to enjoy what it brings to the tier. I mean, when a lot of newer players think of moves like Wrap, they just think of hundreds of turns in RNG hell, but that's not really what Tentacruel is trying to put you through. It's mainly using Wrap for the chip damage and the utility of a free switch. People really enjoy what it brings to the tier, it's actually quite fun. Unfortunately, not all partial trapping abuses are as noble as Tentacruel, and that's where we get to the combination of agility and a partial trapping move. The big problem Pokemon here was Dragonite, there's no way around it. This ban was very, very targeted towards Dragonite, but it's not the only problem Pokemon. Rapidash and Moltres have the combination of agility and fire spin, which, you know, is a lot less consistent, but is still problematic in its own right. And funnily enough, there's also Dragonair, which seems like a very strange pick, but it is notable because unlike Dragonite, it can survive a Blizzard from Tentacruel, which is a big deal, considering Tentacruel is the best Pokemon in the tier. A part of why the combination of agility and a trapping move is so problematic is because it removes one of the main forms of counterplay to trapping moves, and that's just outspeeding the opponent. See, with Tentacruel, yes it has rap, yes it's quite fast, but there are Pokemon that outspeed it that can quite heavily threaten it, such as Dugtrio and Persian. And like, Tentacruel's very valuable, you don't really want to be taking these risks with it. However, if you're facing a Dragonite and it gets that one free turn to set up an agility, you have just entered the fucking lottery. The combination of agility and a trapping move means that you really are just relying on the opponent missing their trapping move to have a shot at beating them. And this led to a ton of Pokemon running toxic, because the main counterplay was to pray that their wrap or their fire spin would miss, and then pray that your toxic hits them on the turn that it misses, so at least there's something doing some damage over time. Is it fun? No. Does it probably take a long ass time? Yes. Now even with agility, relying on moves like Wrap and Fire Spin is inherently inconsistent, and it is generally agreed upon that this strategy wasn't actually overpowered, it's just really uncompetitive and unfun, and it kind of gives the tier a bad look. Like, imagine players who are less experienced with Gen 1 Underuse trying to get into the tier, players who are much more likely to let Dragonite get that free turn to where it can set an agility up. What the fuck are they gonna do? You know? Kinda sucks for them. Now, I have been talking about Dragonite a lot, but honestly, this does apply to Dragonair, Rapidash, and Moltres as well. They're all problematic, but just not as problematic as Dragonite was when this was in play. And you might be wondering, okay, well if it's such a problem in underused, what's the deal with overused? And it's quite simple. Dragonite is the best abuser of agility and rap in underused, and it's the same story in overused, but that's overused. Dragonite is significantly worse there. Okay, well technically Moltres is better than Dragonite in overused, but I don't know, it, it feels weird to call like Moltres an abuser of agility in a partial trapping move. Like, I, I don't know. Like... Jeez, I'm gonna have to think about that one, actually. But yeah, Dragonite kind of fumbles and overused a bit. Like, it just really does not fit the tier. Now, even with this ban in place, I think it's pretty clear that Dragonite will continue to be a very solid Pokémon in Gen 1 underused. So, if for some reason you actually like it, still there, go for it. Unlike Overused, Dragonite has a variety of sets in Gen 1 Underused. It's got sets that just run Wrap, no agility, sets that use agility but not Wrap, and sets that don't use agility or Wrap. It's pretty cool to see, honestly. I, my brain has just been melted by having to deal with agility plus Wrap in Overused. It's... God, I fucking hate Dragonite. Well, now that I've talked about exactly one banned strategy, I'm allowed to fuck everything up and talk about something that not only isn't banned, but isn't even a strategy, it's just a specific Pokemon. Jokes aside though, I think this is worth talking about because while what I'm about to talk about next isn't banned, it's something that a lot of people ask me about because they're not sure how it isn't banned. I want to talk about Snorlax in Generation 2 and why it's not banned from overuse despite how good it is. 
I have mentioned how good Snorlax in Gen 2 is plenty of times. It is the best overused Pokemon ever. Every single Gen 2 overused team that is built with the intent to beat the other guy's team has a Snorlax on it. That's, that's just how it is. But that being said, despite the fact it's also the best Pokemon in Ubers, it's not Banter Ubers. It's still an overused Pokemon, and funnily enough, that's completely fine. Funnily enough, Snorlax in Gen 2 overused is kind of like the opposite of what I just talked about with Rap and Agility in Gen 1 underused. Rap and Agility in Gen 1 underused wasn't considered overpowered, but it was considered really, really detrimental to the metagame for the most part. It made games drag on for much longer than necessary, and it kind of hurt the reputation of the tier in a way. Snorlax is like the opposite of that. Is it overpowered? Absolutely. But does it detract from the metagame in any way? No. If anything, it makes it better, really. This might be a bit of a weird comparison, but I kind of think of Snorlax in Gen 2 like the medic in Team Fortress 2. Are they overpowered? Yeah, kinda. Do you always want one? Yeah. Would the game be better off if you removed them? Fuck no. Snorlax is just kind of like a glue in Gen 2 overused. It really ties everything together quite nicely. It has an incredible offensive presence, but it's not overbearing. It just kind of helps the pace of the metagame. It's quite nice. Until you know what set it's running, Snorlax has no counters, but once you do know what set it's running, there are a number of answers, and none of them are, like, particularly unreasonable. It's just things that you naturally prepare for when making a Generation 2 team. Snorlax doesn't really restrict team building in any way. You have to keep it in mind when making a team, but that's not really an issue. And like, yes, you have to have a Snorlax on your team, but not only is that just one Pokémon, but it's one incredibly versatile Pokémon with a ton of really good sets that you can pick and choose from, and you can customize those sets to your like cost customize? What the fuck did I just say? You can customize those sets to your liking. You've a ton of different options with Snorlax. Also, arguably, if Snorlax was banned, team building would be much more restricted, because then you'd have a shit ton of special attackers just flying all over the fucking place with very few answers. And listen, I'm just saying. If you ban Snorlax, and special attackers become significantly more prevalent in the tier, you know what people are going to start using to deal with those special attackers? Oh, yeah, no, 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 yeah, let's, let's not even fucking go there. Uh, no thank you. So yeah, Snorlax is overpowered in Gen 2, but it's like, good overpowered. You're not just slapping it mindlessly on a team and watching it plow through everything, it's something you really do have to play carefully with. Like, like I said, there's a massive variety of Snorlax sets, but there's a lot of opportunity cost when it comes to Snorlax, right? Like, you're missing out on very valuable things by picking certain sets over certain other sets, right? Snorlax is not a plug-and-play Pokémon. You really do have to think when you use it, and you've also got to think about the opponent Snorlax that they definitely have. Snorlax is great, in a lot of ways. It's really fucking good, both as a Pokémon, and for Gen 2 overused, really. Moving on to Generation 3, you already know we gotta talk about Baton Pass. So, when I made my previous video on banned strats in competitive Pokémon, the state of Baton Pass was that you could have three Pokémon with the move, and none of them could be Smeargled. Now, what we've got going on is quite interesting. You can have as many Baton Pass users as you'd like, and one of them can be Smeargle. But here's the catch. You are only allowed to pass a single stat across the entire team. Only speed boosts, only defense boosts, only attack boosts, that kind of thing. I think this is a really, really cool direction to take Baton Pass. Because, like, it pretty much eliminates the big issue with Baton Pass, which is the stupid fucking chains where it's just like, Alright lads, we pass on the speed boost, we fuck about for a bit, and then we slap everything on a fucking Medicham and just watch it wipe through the entire fucking team. That's the big issue with Baton Pass, and this pretty much eliminates that. Personally, if just Baton Pass as a whole was banned, I'd be kind of disappointed because I quite like the move on its own. I like the idea of using it as like 
a U-turn or a Volt Switch that doesn't do damage. I think that's really neat on Pokemon like Jolteon or Zapdos. And honestly, passing one stat boost isn't that bad, you know? Like, Celebi passing a Sword Stance or Zapdos passing an Agility, I think that's fine. That's alright. That's cool. On top of these new limitations on Baton Pass, the combination of Baton Pass and Mean Look or Spider Web is also banned, just like it is in Generation 2 overused, and this makes perfect sense. It's not really that practical, it's just very uncompetitive and uninteractive. You just trap the opponent and switch out to something, and now they're forced to deal with whatever matchup you want to put them in. It's just really, really lame, and it leads to very, very unfun games where there's almost no counterplay outside of just dumb luck. So I think this is for the best. Now, it's hard to say if this is it for Baton Pass in Generation 3. Like, maybe in the future we'll reach the point where, like, the move will be allowed, but passing stat boosts won't. Or, like, passing speed boosts won't be allowed. Or the combination of Baton Pass and Taunt won't be allowed. I saw that one passed around a lot. But that's the way it is for now. Maybe one day the move itself will get banned, and I'd be kind of bummed out about that. But honestly, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. For Generation 4, I want to talk about something that I don't think I've ever touched on before, and that's Little Cup. See, Generation 4 was the generation where Little Cup really kind of took off. It exists for previous generations, but it wasn't something people really explored until after it took off in Generation 4. Now, the most obvious bans for Little Cup are things that just aren't balanced around the fact that everything is level 5 here. And the two most obvious examples of that are Dragon Rage and Sonic Boom. These are set damage moves that do 40 HP of damage and 20 HP of damage respectively. Dragon Rage in particular would be really, really fucking dumb. You just delete the opponent. This is pre-fairy type as well, so there's no counterplay really. You just kind of delete the opponent and that's that. Most Pokemon have like just over 20 HP. So like, I I, I don't think I really need to go into detail why this is banned, right? This, this, this is pretty self-explanatory when it comes to how dumb this would be. On top of that, the item Berry Juice is also banned. This is kind of like a berry in that once your HP reaches below half, you restore 20 HP. This would be really dumb, that's basically all your health. It's just like a get out of jail free card if you survive any one hit, so it makes sense that that would be banned. Lastly, there's a pretty interesting one. The item Deep Sea Tooth is banned. See, Clampo has two items that are specifically designed for Clampo. They only do things when held by Clampo, and the things that they do are actually pretty fucking crazy. When Clampo holds the Deep Sea Tooth, its special attack is doubled, with no downside. Which is pretty clearly fucked up. It ruled the tier for a while, and then Deep Sea Tooth was eventually banned. Now, Clampo does have one other exclusive item, and that's the Deep Sea Scale, and that doubles its special defense with no downside, but of course, that's not as impactful. Gen 4 Little Cup is an extremely offense-heavy tier, so obviously it's better to double your special attack and be able to be a part of that than to just double your special defense. When Deep Sea Tooth was allowed, Clampo was a fucking menace. But now that it's relying on Deep Sea Scale, it's kind of okay, sort of. It can work, but it's definitely not great and is currently unranked. In Generation 5 Little Cup, both items are allowed. You can use either the Deep Sea's Tooth or the Deep Sea Scale. And with the Deep Sea Tooth, Clampo is a massive threat, but it's not overbearing like it was in Generation 4 Little Cup. Speaking of Generation 5, I think it only makes sense that we touch on one of the most recent and potentially impactful Smogon bans. And that's the banning of gems in Generation 5 overused, which only went through in July of this year. Now at a glance it might seem like a shame to ban gems because they're completely unique to Generation 5 for the most part. Like yeah, you do have the normal gem after Generation 5, but not only is that just the normal gem, but it was also nerfed from a one-time 30% boost to a one-time 50% boost. And let's talk about that 50% boost. That's a massive fucking boost, especially for no real downside outside of, you know, only getting the boost once. A one-time 50% boost really is a massive deal. 
That turns a lot of two-hit KOs into one-hit KOs, especially after Stealth Rock. In practice, it's kind of like a Z-move, but you can have fucking six of them. Now, in practice, you wouldn't have six of them, but it wasn't uncommon for teams to have three or maybe even four gems users. You also have to keep in mind that, unfortunately, people just have not been happy with the state of Generation 5 overuse for a while now. Like, the tier's got a bit of a bad reputation for being a tier where you just hope that your incredibly broken stuff can check the opponent's incredibly broken stuff, and a lot of the Pokémon that were contributing to that were Pokémon that would very often run gems, like Volcarona, Breloom... Cloyster! Cloyster! Yeah, it's Cloyster. Banning gems definitely feels like a step taken to kind of try and dial back some of the more overbearing threats in the tier that are making it a bit of an unhealthy environment. And it is worth noting that on top of the fact that this was an incredibly recent ban, it was also a very, very close ban, coming down to the very last vote. There were quite a lot of people suggesting that Volcarona should be banned rather than gems, because it's one of the most notable abusers of gems. Bog Gem Volcarona is obscenely powerful after a boost. It just shreds through so many Pokémon, and a lot of Pokémon that would consistently check Bog Gem Volcarona get absolutely melted by a plus one Psychic Gem Psychic. Pokémon like Tornadus and Thunderous, which would check the Bog Gem variant, completely crumple after Stealth Rocks to the Psychic variant. And like, I get that luring in your checks and taking them out with something surprising, is cool, you know, that's a very fun element of Pokémon, but when you're one-hit KOing things from full health after rocks that, you know, should pretty solidly check you, maybe things have gone a little bit too far. Especially when there's so many Pokémon doing it. It's not just Volcarona. Breloom is the same deal and so is Cloyster, and it doesn't stop there. You've Pokémon like Landorus potentially one-hit KOing Skarmory after Stealth Rocks with Fighting Gem Superpower. That seems pretty insane to think about, but it's entirely possible. Speaking of Breloom and Cloyster, a factor in why gems popped up on them so much is that it was recently discovered that gems will boost all hits of multi-hit moves. So moves like Breloom's Bullet Seed become obscenely powerful with Grass Gem, or moves like Icicle Spear and Rock Blast on Cloyster. Notably, Ice Gem Icicle Spear at plus two can one-hit KO for Rothorn after Stealth Rocks, which Jesus Christ, that's that's fucking messed up, actually. So yeah, unlike some gems that I know, gems were pretty problematic in Generation 5 overused, and while it's a shame that in the only generation where they, you know, fucking exist, gems are banned in overused, at the very least, they're completely fine in Ubers and UU. So, if you want to use gems, I don't know, go play them. They're pretty cool tiers, actually. No, no one has a problem with them. It's just overuse that's a little bit fucky at the moment. Now, finishing up with Generation 6, I want to talk about one more ban strategy. And out of all the ban strategies that I didn't talk about in my first video, this was the one that people pointed out to me the most. We're going to talk about Fun Bro. Fun Bro is a slow bro set discovered in Generation 6 that, in a shocking twist of events, isn't fun at all, actually. It's kind of fucking disgusting. It's a slow bro that runs the moves Block, Slack Off, Heal Pulse, and Recycle while holding a Leper Berry. And what this essentially does is it allows it to set up an infinite battle. How Fun Bro works is that as Slow Bro, you come in on an opponent that doesn't have access to Toxic and you use Block. This prevents them from switching out. From there, you PP stall them and eventually they're going to have to be forced to use Struggle. Now, Struggle deals recoil damage, which should eventually knock out the opponent, but what you do is you use Heal Pulse, which cancels out the damage done by Struggle. Now, because you have Recycle and Leper Berry, you'll never run out of PP. Leper Berry restores PP, Recycle restores the Leper Berry. So, like, fuck. <laughs> Basically, the battle can't end. This really is an infinite battle, and the only way for it to finish is for one of the two players to forfeit, which is beyond fucked up and uncompetitive, so it should make complete sense why this is banned. Fun Bro and everything that came with it led to the creation of the Endless Battle Clause, which was put in place precisely to stop shit like this from happening. And it's a smog on wide clause, like the Evasion Clause or Sleep Clause, 
So it's not just banned in like Gen 6 OU or Gen 6 Ubers. No, it's banned in multiple tiers. And funnily enough, it's even banned in anything goes. You know? The tier where everything that's even too powerful for Ubers goes. Which is kind of fucking crazy to think about. Like, you can use evasion boosting moves or abilities like Moody in, in anything goes. But you can use Fun Bro. Which, in a way, kind of makes you feel like Fun Bro is the ultimate banned strategy. It's so banned that it's banned from the thing where things aren't banned. Jesus Christ. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this look at even more banned strategies in competitive Pokemon. And if you were one of those people who like to complain about shit that you never played against, I don't know, maybe you learned something. Be pretty cool if you did. But hey, honestly, I don't think I'll ever make a part three. I don't know what the fuck I'd talk about. And I don't know, maybe that maybe that's a bit like too content creatory. I think I'll think I'll leave it at two parts. Fucking next video I'll be like. Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna be counting down the top 10 most broken Pokemon of all time. Number 10, Freddy Fazbear.